What up, AOK Mafia? It's your boy, Arda Kicks It Just Like That. We back with another one. All right, y'all, so we got a video here today. This is 12 Strange Things Found in the Middle of Nowhere. Hmm, this should be interesting. This should be real interesting. What are we about to see? <laughs> Look, got boys and girls ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Want to see more cool videos on our channel? We do, so press this bell and enable to send notifications. The most unexpected things always seem to be in the absolute middle of nowhere. Maybe that's part of what makes it all so Whoa. weird. Humans have left their mark in isolated places, assuming that no one may ever see it again, until now. From large metal balls, giant hands, waterfalls where you might least expect it. Here are strange things found in the middle of nowhere. Number 12. Massive Bosnian Spheres Spheres are not easy to make with basic human tools, no. so spheres found naturally have always sparked debates. No more than this particularly enormous sphere found by a man randomly in a Bosnian forest. This enormous stone weighs over 30 tons and is between 2.4 and 3 meters wide, How? which is big for any stone, let alone a spherical one erratically placed in the woods. Intensifying the mystery, the stone quite obviously has a red metallic look, indicating it quite clearly has high iron content. Archaeologist Sam Osmanagic who has been researching the prehistoric stone sphere phenomenon for 15 years, believed it could be an indication of advanced ancient civilizations. It's an exciting theory, but the archaeologist has been doubted to the point of ridicule by others in the field, who said the prospect of an ancient civilization creating the stone was absurd. Instead, they suggest that the stone was formed through the process of concretion, where rock is formed from secretions of mineral cement within sediments which is perhaps no less miraculous. Interestingly though, there are examples of spirit. I mean, I don't know that that's a possibility, but how could that create something so round? I seriously doubt it. Stones that have been chiseled by ancient civilizations by hand, like the Costa Rica stones, created between 500 to 1500 BC, these stones feature geoglyphs and other markings. Number 11, Giant Hand of the Desert. It almost appears as though a giant zombie is rising from the ground in the middle of the Atacama Desert in Chile. Located in one of the driest places in the world, it- Ooh, I learned something today. I didn't know Chile had a desert. Features a hand popping up in the middle of nowhere. That's crazy. This was built in the early 1980s, and apparently hands rising from the desert was an actual obsession from the sculptor. Luckily, it's not a giant zombie that was buried and is coming back to life. This is located near the Chilean town of Antofagasta and measures 36 feet high from the ground. Dry desert places are already pretty creepy by themselves, but then when you add a That's zombie crazy. hand to the mix, you might start. Look how big it is. How did it get there? That's massive. That is huge. To have nightmares. Number 10, sudden Tunisian desert lake. We're all familiar with the trope of desperate people exposed to desert climates for too long who start to see mirages of water that appear out of nowhere. This conceit became real in an area of Tunisia, 25 kilometers from Gafsa in July 2014, when a lake seemed to appear out of nowhere. It was no small body of water either. It spanned about 2.6 acres and was estimated to be as much as 18 meters deep, according to the digital journal. Naturally, it drew many people who wanted relief from the heat, which would climb over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. That's for those who prefer rational explanations for seemingly anomalous events, the main option for a potential source is not good for the people who cooled themselves in it. Nearby, there are phosphate mines, and the lake mm. potentially came from an underground spring freed by the mining process. This, unfortunately, would mean the lake is likely contaminated with carcinogens, and yeah. potentially radioactive carcinogens at that. Big time. Still, the Tunisian government did not attempt to ban swimming in it. Number nine. That's crazy. That is crazy. 
That is so crazy that that appeared there. And obviously, you know, whoo, nah, they don't need to be in that water. I wouldn't. Sailing stones. So picture yourself in the desert. There are no footsteps, no trace of any animal prints, just a few stones accompanying you and their tracks. But wait, stones don't have tracks. They look like they've slid down a hill slowly, but it doesn't add up as there is no hill, just a flat desert basin. And it's not as if the stones sprout legs when you aren't looking and run across the desert. So what on earth is happening here? These rocks found in Death Valley were first noted in 1915, and they quickly piqued the interest of geologists worldwide. Throughout the 50s, a number of theories developed to explain how these stones made their way across distances of over 100 meters, seemingly without any external force. The furthest tracks are actually a staggering 800 to 900 meters long. Geologists really had their work cut out explaining this. Some theories were incredibly complex, suggesting the stones covered their distance over centuries. Most saw that winds and moisture played roles, but then some stones weighed up to 300 kilograms. What was then discovered was that these stones covered large distances quite quickly, moving many meters in months. How do you think this happened? Let us know in the comments below. Dude, for Number real. Eight, Wav I've seen those images before, but how? How do they happen? And Nemes. Libya is a fairly Yo, you gotta love our planet, man. This is so freaking mysterious. A large country in Africa that appears to be the same color for miles and miles. But from an aerial view, you'll notice a large black dot that seems to stand out. This is Wav and Nemes. It's an oasis that formed in the middle of a volcanic crater, and the change in color of the sand is from an extinct volcano that once spewed lava in this area. Mm. Its name is translated to Oasis of Mosquitoes, due to large amounts of mosquitoes here, and it was unknown outside of Africa until the late 19th century, Makes when sense. a French soldier was kept prisoner here. It served as an important watering hole for caravans trying to make it across the vast Saharan desert, and it kind of stands out if you're in the area. Number seven, desert. But is that water safe though? I wouldn't find out because they got mosquitoes. For graveyard for sea mammals. Speaking of graveyards, the mystery boat is hardly alone in terms of finding surprising burial sites in the sands. In the Atacama Desert in Chile, there's a hill called Cerro Ballena, Whale Hill. 40 meters above sea level that during road work in 2010 was found to contain fossils of 40 whales along with a collection of other marine mammals such as dolphins and seals, wow. not to mention some fish related to swordfish. It initially seemed like an amazing case of mass fossilization. How could dozens of mammals of various species have all died at once and in so many cases have been preserved? The most accepted explanation is that the numerous mammals and fish were deposited over time, and that the hill in question happened to be a place where the bodies were washed up, only to have nature preserve them for six to nine million years. The rather worrying suspect of the deaths that left them to wash up on the land was a spontaneous algae infection. True or not, it certainly left an unusual resting place for quite a menagerie. Number six, hmm. Nakoma. Also known as a safeguard program, this military base was installed in 1976 in order to protect the United States stockpile of range missiles in North Dakota. This flat-top, pyramid-looking bunker, made from reinforced concrete, was designed in order to stay intact after a small ICBM launch from the Chinese or the Russians. The Great Plains in America's Northwest proved to be good locations to construct. You can imagine if the Chinese or Soviets spotted the strange building, they'd have no idea what on earth it really is. It apparently cost six billion dollars to construct. Imagine that. If it cost six billion dollars, six billion, that's a lot of money to construct this thing. How much did it cost, or how much time did it cost to make the freaking Great Pyramids? And was only enough of Egypt operation for about six months. Dang, it only took them six months to build that. This base is abandoned today but it still stands as a strong reminder of how fear of enemies can result in extremely expensive projects. Exactly. That junk's a bandit, bro, so you telling me that was a waste of six billion dollars? Stupid. Number five, Kotsky Pillar Monastery. 
Imagine living on top of the stone pillar in the middle of nowhere and the forests of the Caucasus Mountains. We imagine there's no Wi-Fi for the monk who lives at the top of the Kotsky pillar in the European country of Georgia. It's about 40 meters or 150 feet high is made of limestone. And man, who the freak built that up there, man? They crazy. And it remains unclimbed to historians until 1944. It remains somewhat of a mystery of how inhabitants of the monastery first made it up there. But in modern times, supplies are brought up there by people from a nearby village using a pulley system. Whoever is brave enough to live on top of that thing better be hoping there's no earthquakes in the near future. Number four, Little. Bro, I don't know if I would want to go up there. I, you know what? I would. I would go up there. I'd be terrified climbing that mess, but I, I'd do it. Just, just Matt. Nah. See, I'm playing with death. I'm playing with life. Little alien. Located in the middle of nowhere USA and Rachel, Nevada, you'll find a motel that's dedicated to giving you the truth about Area 51. We should also mention this is the closest town to the top secret government facility that you can get to without getting harassed by the camo dudes. Hmm. If you take a look at it on Google Earth, you can tell that only Bald Mountain is separating you from the truth. It's one of the top hotels used by UFOologists to try to get a look at what's going on around the corner. Without all the lights from around the corner. Wait, isn't this hotel like 2.5 million miles? I mean, million miles. 2.5 miles away from the actual Area 51. From the big city. That's more than around the corner. City. The Nevada skies will likely. Wait, not 2.5 miles. 2.5 hours. That's worse. No. 2.5. Three hours. Area 51, a little alien. That's a three hour drive. That ain't close. That's literally like me leaving Georgia, going to a different state. You buy UFOologists to try to get a look at what's going on around the corner. Without all the lights from the big city, the Nevada skies will likely be clear enough for you to look into the cosmos and decide for yourself if we are all alone. Number three, giant fossilized armadillo. Around 25 miles south of Argentina's capital, Buenos Aires, a man what noticed a rather strange silhouette shape tucked up against a riverbank. It had a mysterious egg-like form, and the first inclination was that it was some form of dinosaur egg. It's an incredibly strange finding, as clearly no animal on Earth has any body part looking quite like this. Upon closer inspection, the egg-like form seemed more like an animal's shell, and that's exactly what it turned out to be. Not quite a dinosaur, but prehistoric. The shell most likely belonged to a giant armadillo named Glyptodont. The Glyptodont was an ancient armadillo that measured 3.3 meters long by 1.5 meters high. But the weight is the most surprising at an enormous 2,000 kilograms. Yep, two tons. It's incredibly well preserved because shells and fossils are often preserved on riverbanks. And as the bank erodes, they are gradually exposed. Number two. Flip it over, I want to see the other side. Richard III found. So where do you expect to find Richard III, King of England, for centuries after his death? In an English countryside abbey graveyard? Maybe a tomb? Nope, in a Leicester car park. Richard III was the last English king to die in battle in 1485 in the Battle of Bosworth Field so his biography is of strong historical significance. Surviving legal papers showed that he was transported to Leicester, giving people somewhere to start. In 2012, the ruins were still at large until historian Philippa Langley and the Richard III Society began an archaeological study on a car park that seemed the likeliest location. What? Philippa Langley famously said, The first time I stood in that car park, the strangest feeling just washed over me. I thought, I am standing on Richard's grave. They found church foundations and a complete skeleton with wounds matching Richard's, later proved through DNA matching to indeed be Richard III. All because of a hunch. No. Nope. You're kidding. That's crazy! What? That is crazy. Number one, Havasu Falls. 
The Supai Village is possibly the most isolated community on the continental United States. It's only accessible by helicopter or an eight-mile hike from the nearest road. Located in Arizona on the Havasupai Indian Reservation, it's still the only place in the U.S. where the mail is actually delivered by mule. Due to its proximity to the Grand Canyon, it still manages to attract occasional tourists willing to take the eight-mile trek through the desert. And in the past, the village has been damaged by flash floods, and the trails were closed off, adding to its isolation. About 200 people called the Desert Village home, with 96% of them being Native American. One thing you probably wouldn't expect to see here on this amazing Indian reservation is a massive waterfall, which has become a hotspot for Instagrammers who can make it out there somehow. The waterfall here measures anywhere from 90 to 100 feet tall. It's simply breathtaking. If you ever it looks beautiful. find yourself in Arizona, definitely put it on your list. For Thank sure. you so much for watching. I would definitely love to go check that out and meet some of my Indian but folks, look, that reminds me, I still haven't did my 23andMe test. It's just sitting in there on my kitchen counter. Just, I've been busy working on content. But uh, anyway, y'all know what time it is. If you like this reaction, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Stay tuned for more. As always, the link to the original will be down in the description box below. If you haven't already, make sure you follow your boy on the ground man Twitter at Kicks. You know what? My mouth is full of saliva right now. I'm going to go do this 23andMe test right now. Seriously. Till the next one.